don't see it. Yeah, there it is. So we're good. We are good. So are good. Hello, everybody. Hey, sister, how are you? Are you going to be in tonight with us? No? Oh, man. All right. We'll wait for the other guys. So how many, how many more do we have? A couple, just a few? All right. We'll wait for them. I don't want to start without them because... Everybody make sure you're in a position where you guys can hear me. And where I can hear you because I have people reading and stuff. Some of you might want to move a little closer. And move over here. We got the one table right up in front of us too. Be killing flies. I can reach them. Yeah, this will be good. Okay, we'll be getting ready to start here. I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes. We'll go ahead and go. The other guys come in, they just get a little bit late. That's okay. They can just join us when, 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 when they get here. I'm gonna start it up about, uh, about two minutes.
that all you guys go up to Montana? Uh, yeah, I'm going to the bed now. What's that? Oh, yeah, pretty much all of us. What was happening up there? Oh, a lot of fun. <laughs> work, or was it work, or was it? It was both. Yeah. yeah. In, what's that? A country festival. Oh, really? So it was a, were a bunch of set freeze out there? Really? Oh, yeah. How was the temperature? Uh, cool? I think we're about ready to go. Amen. Let me go ahead. Yeah, two more still coming around. Okay, <laughs> two more coming. All right. Well, for those that are uh, joining us online, uh, we want to welcome you to the Desert Center Set Free School of Ministry. Uh, I've got a software studio here, so you're seeing some different things online, which, uh, which is cool. Um, we do want to welcome you. We normally start at 6, but I had some business in Los Angeles today and finished it up early. So we came out here and we changed the start time from 6 to 4. Uh, we're going to wait, give, give it a couple of minutes, and we're going to get going. Uh, and uh, we're going to be in, in, in chapter 3 of our uh, study. Uh, what the Bible says to the minister. And tonight, uh, we're going to be talking about, let's see, part, part well, well last, last, last time I was here, last month, we, we, part one of the, of chapter three, part one of chapter three was that you were to be a pattern of the glorious truth that God saves sinners, a living example of God's mercy. And we went through some scriptures, we talked about that. And today we're into part two. And part two is that you're to go and make disciples of all nations. Okay, this is part two. So uh, in your notes today under part two, you're gonna wanna underline, uh, you're to make disciples you're to go and make disciples of all nations. Now, this falls again under the caption of what your purpose as a minister must be. Well, the first one was that to be a pattern of the glorious truth that God saves sinners. A living example of God's mercy. And we talked a lot about God's mercy and how that we ought to be examples of that. But... Now we're moving to the second portion. Okay, we've, we've already talked about that. Now we're talking about the other, another purpose, okay, as a minister. And we're all ministers here. Okay, and that is that we're to go and make disciples of all the nations, of everybody. That does not mean, folks, that the pastor's job is to make disciples. Okay, once you become a Christian and you've gone to the altar and you've made that decision for Christ in your life, we have a responsibility, and I imagine we'll probably touch on it here, I can already see it does, in the Great Commission. Uh, the Great Commission is in uh, uh, Matthew 28, and also in Mark 16. And in both of those instances, it tells us that we're to go out and make disciples of the nations, and we know that God was not just or, or the Lord was not just speaking to the initial uh, 11 or 12 apostles that, uh, that he was talking to at that time, uh, because at the end of it all, he says, and I'm with you until the end of the age. So we know that the Lord is uh, uh, speaking to everybody, everybody, not just to those, to that group of people, but to everybody for the day that we're living in today. And that means that you and for me. So we still have that responsibility of going and making disciples of the nations. Okay, we're going to uh, get into it just a little bit more. Uh, and, and so I'm going to just go ahead and start issuing some scriptures. And so 
you know, if anyone can get a hand up, okay. You got to read loud though, so because we are recording, so we want everybody, those that are following online, and there are people that follow online, to be able to hear what you're saying, so they can they can uh, uh, read along with you. And so the first scripture is Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20. We want to substantiate and back up what I'm saying that we're to make disciples of the nations and see it in scripture. So Matthew 28. 19 through 20, anybody get, uh, you know, can read. So, somebody get a hand up. Right here. Okay, right here. All right, brother, go ahead. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The very end of the world, okay, folks. This is important because, you see, there are, some denominations that say, well, that's not for now. The Lord is only talking to the 12 apostles or to the, I, I don't, I don't, maybe this was given when Judas was already uh, gone. So it could have been 11, but, but I, I'd have to look at it. But in any case, they think that it was given to the original apostles. But we know that that's not true because at the end of this, he says, lo, I'm with you until the end of the world or the end of the age. So, so based on that sentence in itself, we understand that God is not just speaking to a group of people that lived at that particular time, the 12 apostles or of that time, but that he's talking to us now also, that we're to walk in the same commission. We call this part of the scripture, the Great Commission. Go therefore and teach all nations, okay? That's our responsibility, folks. It, all nations, you may not go to Africa, you may not go to Saudi Arabia or Iran or, 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 or South America, but you're here. And, 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 and so you have a responsibility to where you're at, if, whether you travel overseas and other places or not. We, the, the, we have a responsibility to reach people here in this state, and in this country, in this city, in this community, wherever we are, where, whoever we meet. That, that responsibility lays down lies with us. It's not with other people. And a lot of times, gotcha. A lot of times we're waiting for other people to do it. We expect the pastor to do it. Maybe somebody else ought to do it. We look at, at, at different people and think, well, they can do it. But God is God is going to ask you what you did with with Jesus. I I always like to talk about the fact that I study about people that have died on the operating tables or that have physically died and they saw the Lord and then they were revived and some saw hell, some saw heaven, depending upon, you know, maybe where their destiny was going to be if they didn't repent or if they, or if they already had repented and they were walking with the Lord. But one of the unique questions that was asked in so many of those instances was, what did you do with me? Jesus was talking to them. What did you do with Jesus in your life? Well, folks, that's, that, that's a big question. The question is not that you went to the altar and you, you asked Jesus Christ into your, your life as Lord and Savior. That's important. But if he's your Lord, even Jesus said to the disciples, why is it that you call me Lord, Lord, but then you don't do what I tell you to do? So we can sit there and say he's my Lord, he's my Savior, but if we're not doing anything with that, if we're not willing to go out and to pass what God has given to us over to others, then we're not really doing what God wants us to do. We're not being obedient. And that's the sin of omission. See, a lot of people think of sins of like adultery and maybe going out and getting high, drugs, you know, uh, a, lot, a lot of other things. But there's also a sin called the sin of omission the sin of omission, if you take the word omission or to omit, is, is to erase or to leave out something. And, and so the sin of omission is to leave out, not doing what you're, you're supposed to do. And, and, and all of us could be guilty, even though we're, we, 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 we believe we're Christians and we have a, a, a heart to, to serve God. If we're not doing anything with that, Folks, we're guilty of the sin of omission, and we can't do that. We're, we are to, to go out and do these things. We're to make disciples of the nations. We're to teach other people. We're to witness. We're to share our testimony. These are the things that God wants us to do, or else we're 
guilty of the sin of omission. That's, that's just reality. That's the truth. The Bible says in, in, in the last day or in that final day that many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not raise the dead? Didn't we heal the sick? Uh, didn't we do miracles in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of evil. Why were they workers of evil? He said, because I never knew you, because there was no relationship. They were just religious. They wore the uniform, but they didn't do the work. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what it is. We, we have to be willing to, to do the work. So it's important that we are workers for Christ. Now, I know there will some will say, well, pa Pastor Misha, Apostle Misha, I, I, or whatever you want to call me, okay, I thought that we weren't saved by works. We're saved by faith. But the Bible does say that faith without works is dead. Now, it is true that we're not saved by works in the sense that you can't climb a stairway to heaven. If you go out and do all the good, best deeds in the world and try to earn a spot in heaven, you're not going to get there. Because you're, that's called self-righteousness. And that means you're trying to do it in yourself. All of us know, and if you don't know, I'm here to tell you, <clears throat> no matter how, good, how hard we try, none of us are righteous enough to enter into heaven because heaven is a perfect place. And so even if we do the very best we can, we're going to slip and fall somewhere. And imperfection can enter into a perfect place. So how do we get there? We get there in Christ's righteousness. We stand in His righteousness because of what He did for us on the cross. That is why what Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, why it is so important for us. Because we cannot enter into heaven based on our own righteousness, our own works. But in His righteousness, He takes our place. He becomes a substitute for us. He says... Even though they're guilty, even though they're imperfect, I declare them perfect because they have accepted me into their life. So we enter into heaven in his righteousness, right? You guys get that. Amen? Amen. All right. So it's not in our own righteousness that we do anything. Now, that's why, why by doing everything and trying to do, as hard as you can to do all the right things, it's, you can still fall short. But we stand in His righteousness. Yet, okay, at the same time, if we, have, if we say that we have faith in the Lord, but there are no, uh, no accompanying works, faith without works is dead. And the reason this is, okay, is when you have faith in the Lord, it's not you doing things in your own righteousness anymore or trying to be righteous. You have faith in the Lord, and because of your love and your relationship with God, you want to do those things. You understand the difference? You understand the difference the difference between being forced to do something okay bless you pastors do you, do, you, do you understand the difference between being forced to do something and you you're doing it in your righteousness and you're trying to work your way up into something as opposed to you, you moving in faith because you love him and out of your love for him you want to do those things you want to do the good works. You want to go out and teach others. You want to make disciples. You want to share your testimony. Why? Because He did something for you. Because the Lord healed you. You want to go out and you want to heal and touch the lives of others, right? See, there's, there's a huge difference between that and going out and trying to do it in yourself. And just saying, well, you know, I don't care about it. It doesn't really matter what Christ did. I'm going to work my way to heaven. You, you can't. Okay, so it's important that we understand what, what Christ did for us so that we can do the things that, that, that we're, we're, we're called to do, but understanding that it's done out of a relationship with Him. For those you know, that, that, that just came in, uh, we're at our second point in what the Bible, uh, what our purpose of, 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 uh, uh, as a minister is. And the first one was last week that we're to be a pattern of the glorious truth that God saves sinners, a living example of God's mercy. And the point today, okay, that we're covering today, point two, is this, okay, that we're to go and make disciples of all nations. That is the second point of the, of the study. We, first point, like I said again, for those coming in, was that uh, we were to be a pattern of the glorious truth that God saves sinners, a living example of God's mercy. But point two is that we're to go and make disciples of the nations. So if you're a Christian, if you consider yourself a Christian, you're a disciple of Christ, and as such, the responsibility is that we are to go out 
and make disciples, uh, 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 disciples of others, of the nations. And you're in this country, you're in this place, you're in this city, you're in this community, you're in, the, in, in this church. You have a responsibility to do that. Okay? So we, we need to understand that and, we, and, and, and make, make, make sure we, we get it. And we need to understand that this great commission that we read in Matthew 28, and I'll read it again because I, know I want to expound on it that our brother read over here. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, teaching or making disciples of them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded ye, and lo, I am with you even until the end of the world. I brought out the fact, and I'm just bringing this out for those that just arrived or maybe those that have signed in on, on, that are with us on, online here, that there are some people that actually teach, well, you know, that doesn't really apply to us because Jesus was only speaking to the uh, original apostles. But we know that that's not true because if you read this in context, you see at the very end of the Great Commission the words of the, that Jesus says, Lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. So we know it was not just for one time period, not for 2,000 years ago, but all the way to the end of the world. Other translations that you may have says, Lo, I'm with you even to the end of the age. So we have to understand that this Great Commission did not just apply to the 12. Now that's important because when you get into Mark 16 in the Great Commission, if you want to go there, you can go there. I, 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 it's, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to even be in this, brought up in the study here. But in Mark 16, Mark hears, you know, Jesus, and he writes down what, what, what he heard. Matthew writes down what they heard. They're not in contradiction to each other. It's just that they didn't each hear different things. One just, you know, emphasizes one thing that maybe the other person doesn't emphasize. It's like me investigating a car accident. You know, I, I talk to one witness as he tells me the red car ran across the intersection and, 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 and ran a light and hit the yellow car, T-boned the yellow car. And the next person tells me that, yeah, that happened, but the, the guy that was driving the red car was drinking a, a bottle of a beer. The, the first person didn't necessarily see that. The second person did. So he just adds to it. Okay? So we see Mark adding to the Great Commission by saying, uh, by, by saying this, that we're to go out and... Out, somebody could read it. Um, uh, it's, I think, the last verse in Mark 16. I've got to look for it myself because it's not in our study notes. 16, 19, or 20. Yeah, uh, let me look at it. Uh, I'm going to tell you in just a second. Let me just get to it. Mark 16. Yeah, let me, let me see which one it is. Uh, yeah, I think it's verse 15 and 16. Go ahead. 15 and 16 says... He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. 16. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Okay, go ahead and read 17. All right, and it says, And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out the demons. They will speak in new tongues. And verse 18 says, They will pick up snakes with their hands, and they will drink deadly poison, and they will not hurt them at all. Right. Okay, and really, really, folks, this is really important because, folks, this applies to us. And, and so if we're going out making disciples of nations, it's not just that God is calling us to say, oh, you're a sinner, you, you, you need the Lord, ask Jesus into your heart and, and be a Christian. Okay, that's not all of it. Okay, that, that's part of it, but it's not all of it because it says these signs shall accompany them that believe. Now, we already said that, lo, that Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you even to the end of the age. So we know that applies to us. And the Great Commission of making disciples of the nations applies to us also. But when we look at the word, it says, These signs shall accompany them that believe. That's us. Okay? It says, In my name they will cast out demons. In other words, you'll deliver people of demons. You'll exercise them. You'll cast out spirits. You, they shall speak in new tongues. Some of you guys... You got to read it. Read it for what you read it for. Read the words yourself. Okay, it happened in the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit came and it manifested itself. Tongues is not of the devil. Tongues is of the Lord. And and you know we can get into a whole study about that, and we will eventually. But let me just keep going because I need to cover all of this. They shall pick up serpents 
Okay, that does not mean, folks, that we go out and get a bunch of rattlesnakes and twirl them like they do in the Appalachians and try not to get bit. That's not what he was talking about. The people that do that have misread the scripture and they're, they're cults. They're practicing, you know, a false, a false uh, a misinterpretation of the scriptures, false, false religion. But, it, but I'll tell you where it did apply. Remember the apostle Paul got to get shipwrecked and he goes and grab, grab some firewood? Well, in that firewood, he didn't know that he had a serpent, a snake in there. But you know how snakes, if you've been out in this desert here, then you, you, all you got to do, go out, you know, I'll put you to the task. You can walk out and go pick up some dead wood and look and see what's under it about this time of the year. Yep. If you pick up five of them, I guarantee you somewhere you're going you're gonna to find a rattlesnake or something underneath one of them. Okay? Snakes like to hang out in the wood. And so they were gathering, Paul's gathering the wood. He picks it up, throws it on the, on, on, on the fire, lights the fire, and out comes a viper. Fast. And it attaches himself to him. And all the natives there, they knew this was a poisonous snake because they were waiting for him to drop dead. You go and read the story in Acts. They were wondering, they were watching to see what had happened. He didn't die. They thought that the guy was Superman or something. That's where the scripture came in. So if you inadvertently... And I've had it happen to me, folks. What, folks, I'll tell you, I was poisoned once. Somebody actually, uh, actually tried to kill me one time and poisoned me. And I was sick as a dog. But I, but and um, I started praying because I knew, I, I knew somebody was somebody tried to kill me. And I prayed, and and, and God and God delivered me from that. I was so sick. I, I can't even describe to you. I wouldn't. It's too gross for me to describe. For being on people watching, but I was sick, and um, but but I, but I started praying. I started claiming that promise because I knew I was about to die, and uh, and, and 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 I I started feeling better, and, and and within a matter of probably I don't know half an hour, I was up on my feet and I felt all right. This is where the scripture where you've got to know the word of God and apply it, folks. These signs shall accompany them and believe. In my name they shall cast out spirits or, or devils. They shall speak new tongues. They shall pick up servants. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There are some people that say, well, healing is not for today. Well, if it's not for today, when is it? Because it, we just got finished reading in Matthew, lo, I'm with you even to the end of the age. I'm even with you. I'm with you even to the end of the world. So, it, it, so God is relating that. If you, you've got to take everything in context. Why would the Lord say that right after he gave the Great Commission in Matthew 28? Because he's trying to let the people know that that didn't just apply for that time. It applies all the way through now. He's with us until the end of the age. We still have the authority. We still have the power. We to cast out demons. We still have the power to heal the sick. So when, when there are people that try to teach, well, there are no miracles for today. We don't need healing for today. Uh, that was for yesterday. We, but, 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 you know, and there are people that teach that. It's, it's not true. Healing is very much alive today. We know that that's not true. We can prove that it's not true. Because we can go into the book of James, even. And, 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 and if you go all the way into the book of James, the Lord says... James says, let, the, let, let, let whoever is ill go to the elders of the church. He didn't name only 12 apostles. He said, go, to the 12, go to the elders of the church, let them anoint him with oil, pray the prayer of faith, the Lord will restore the one that's sick, and the Lord will raise him up. He's forgiven any sins, they'll be forgiven. All of this, folks, so we have to understand there are some people that only want to apply what's in the word of God to the past because they have no faith for right now. So it's easy for them to say, well, that was back for then. We don't have to walk that way. We have the Bible. Folks, the Bible doesn't send you to heaven. The Bible, is, is, it, they're, they're, the Bible tells us that. It tells us that, we, we, that we're not to preach the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. The letter of the law kills, but the spirit gives life. More wars have been fought over the letter of the law of this book. People have died because of the letter of the law. We need to walk in the, in, in, in the reality of it. It has to be real to us. If it's not, we just have religion. Dead religion. 
There are denominations all over the United States today that started in the, on a legitimate truth. Luther was right when he pinned, you know, his, his the thesis on the door that the just on the on, 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 on the door of the Catholic Church that said the just shall live by faith. And at one point, the Lutheran Church was alive and vibrant. But you look at it today, and I'm not putting any Lutherans down. I'm just saying it the way it is. It's dead. It's a dead religion, a dead church. There's no life there. The people don't believe in anything more than what Martin Luther did. The just shall live by faith. And we see the Methodists. And we, we can go through all the denominations. We see that many of them pick up a great truth and start. And then they build a fence around their little group. And then things, they, they, don't, they don't continue on. But we're to continue on. We don't put a limitation on God. If it's, the way I look at it is if the Bible says it, then we should walk in it. Do you guys agree with me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, I mean, I'm passionate about that. Because we have too many Christians that aren't doing anything. We have too many Christians that are satisfied just being religious and doing nothing. We need to, to, to be again to appropriate this. So that this part of the study going into uh, Mark 16 really wasn't in my notes, but it's a carryover uh, of, of, of the Great Commission in Matthew 28 that we read. So we need to see them both, and we need to read both of them together. And, and, and this is what we need to do. We, we ought to be able to lay hands, and, and I've seen it. There have been many times I prayed for a lady in, when I passed through my first church, and I, I, she was not, not a normal member. I had a, a, a large church, and she was sitting in the very, very back of the church, on, uh, and, and um, uh, at that time I didn't meet her. I, I think I, I shook her hand going out the door or, or something. But, but she gave a, for whatever reason, gave a huge offering to, to the church. And so my wife had cashed the check, and so we remembered because it had a business name on the check. And so, we were, and so it happened that probably about a month later, my wife and I went out to get a pizza at a pizza place, and we, we, we actually went down to sit, in, sit down in the place to watch a fight. She's a Filipino, so she loves Manny, Manny Pacquiao, right? So it was a Manny Pacquiao fight, you know? Matter of fact, I remember who, who, who the fight. It was against, against uh, what was that guy from England? The white guy. But anyway, uh, I can't remember. No, he was a little guy, man. No, Manny Pacquiao was a little Yeah, yeah, Manny Pacquiao was a little. But yeah. this guy was, anyway, he was undefeated or something from Britain. And yeah, Manny Man, Huh? Manny Pacquiao. Who? You're right, he was undefeated. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, but anyway, Pacquiao knocked him out. But but, but anyway, we, my, my wife went in to order the pizza. So I go into the, I, I, I look and I said, lovely, I said, isn't that, uh, that, that name looks familiar to me. And she said, yeah, it's the woman that, that visited our church. And I said, oh, that was the business on her check. Well, let me go in and say hi to her. I haven't seen her in three or four weeks that she just came by. So I go into the in, in there, and uh, she says to me, oh, Pastor, you know, I'm so glad to see you. She said, can I talk to you for a moment? And she was about to close up. So I said, sure. You know, so we, we, we picked a spot, you know, a room where she could sit down and talk. She, and, and we sat down. She just broke down crying, just, just crying tears. And I just sat there and just looked at her. And then I was waiting to see what she'd say. And so I said, so, I said, what's wrong? And she said, well, she said, I, I went to, the, to, the, to the, do the doctor today, and she said, I got really bad news. But she said, I don't want to give voice to it, because, you know, she felt that if she voiced it, it would even be worse. You know, and that which I fear would come upon me, I'm sure it was probably what was in her mind. I understood that. So I said, well... I said, we can always pray and believe God to, to heal you. You don't have to tell me. You know, we'll just pray for you. I'll pray for you. Let's just agree together. And I got my oil and I, I started to anoint her head. And as I did, and we were getting ready to pray, the Lord spoke to me. And, and I knew it had to be the Lord because I had never thought of this. I didn't even know at that time what, really what it was. And, but the Lord, Lord said to me, not audibly, so I didn't hear a voice. Okay, but I heard it like, very loud, like a thought, but, but, but amplified. So I knew it was the Lord, not my own thoughts. And he said, she has lupus. So I, I looked at her, I said, ma'am, I said, uh, did they tell you you've got lupus? And boy, her eyes got as big as saucers. Oh, because she, she, she said, how could you possibly know that? 
She said, I didn't tell anybody, nobody. She said, how could you know that? And she was just crying. She said, and, and I waited for it, and I said, listen, I said, the Lord did it, probably revealed it to me only because he wants to heal you. I said, I don't think God shows somebody something unless he wants to do something. So I said, let's, let's, let's really pray and believe God to heal you for, from this. So, so I laid hands on her, and we prayed, Lord Jesus, and Father, we, we bind every spirit of infirmity. Lord, we, Lord, we, we, we break this spirit, of, you know, this, this thing that's come upon her, this lupus, and we lose complete healing in the name of Jesus. And Amen. I didn't have any power within me, but there's power. How, how many of you know that there's power in the name of Jesus? Do you know that? Yes. Do you know that there's power in the blood of Jesus? Amen. If, you know, if you know that, then you got to eat, then use it. Use it. Somebody pulls a knife on you. I don't know if you've ever had this happen. You might want to, because our, our first instinct, if somebody pulls a gun or a knife on us, is pull a gun or a knife on them. If we got one. But what if you don't got one? <laughs> you better be a good talker or a fast runner. But, but, or, but, but, but you could also say, and, and, and I've been in a situation like that before. In the name of Jesus, you know, Lord, I, I rebuke that. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And it frees up, man. Put the thing away. And walked off. <laughs> I, I can tell you some stories, man. Really some stories. God, 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 there's power in the name of Jesus. So I prayed for her, and I didn't see her for probably a, a week. About two weeks later, she showed up in the church, sat back in the back of the church, same place that she was the first time. And she says, uh, she says, a pastor, can I, can I give a testimony? And uh, I said, sure, you know. So she stood up, and she said, you know, she said, I went to the hospital, and, and, and I, I hadn't been feeling good, and they did all kinds of tests on me. And they told me that I had lupus. So she didn't say, you know, I, I don't remember if she said I prayed for or not. But she said, I got prayer. She said, and, and so two days later, I, I decided to go back. So I went back and I asked them if they could retest me. They said, why? You know, you, you, you've got it. It's not going away. So could you just retest me? So they retested her. And when they retested her, the, the guy said, I don't know. What, what, what's going on here, you know, but, um, you know, I don't know what you did, you know, but, every, but there's no sign of lupus. Everything is fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with you. And to this day, she's, she's fine and she's healed. Folks, God moves. And he, he moves through us. And it's not like we're, some people, oh, God, you, Misha, you must be a wizard. <laughs> no, you know, but people think that. People in the world, you lay hands on them and, and, and they get healed. Sometimes that, it doesn't, we, we don't just pray for Christians. We pray for unbelievers. And sometimes when God heals them or a miracle happens in their lives, folks, that is their revelation of the Lord. Yes. Man. Yes. It's not, it, it, they, 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 they experience something and something happened in their life. And so we need to move in that. We need to take these scriptures seriously when we talk about making disciples of, of, of all nations, how does that happen? Well, in many ways. It's not just talking to them. By all means, share your testimony. Read the Bible. Share scriptures. You know, but but we, we have to be all things to all men. And one of the things I would emphasize that this, this, this lesson really doesn't, but I, I found to be very important, is that you, you really need to reach people where they're at. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, they're, they're, uh, like I, you guys heard me say this before, so I, yeah, it's probably old, old to you, or at least some of you. But I remember when back in the day, a long time ago, I used to hang out at the beach. And I wasn't a beach person all the time, but I liked the water. I'd hang out pretty much. Back then, we didn't have you know uh, the technology that they got today, so we had but we had cassette players. So I'd take my cassette player and throw a tape cassette in there and listen to music. And be watching the chicks walking by. You know, I wasn't going to get in the water. I was just hanging out. Hanging out at the beach. So I'm just sitting there and some guy walks up to me. And he had, I'm sure he meant well. But he walks up to me and he says, excuse me. And as I looked up at him. And he says, do you know that you're a sinner? And if you don't repent, you're going to hell? And I looked at him and I said, shut up and get out of here. <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what I said. And I, I grew up in the church, but I wasn't in, in a church frame of mind at that time. I had backslidden, pretty much. 
And when he said that to me, I, I didn't want to talk to him. Any, from that point on, anything that he would have had to say, I, wouldn't, I didn't want to hear. He blew his opportunity. If he would have sat down to me, maybe talked with me, maybe he would figure out where I was at. And, and then we had a conversation. Who knows? He probably would, you know, maybe God would have spoken to my heart. But they didn't, he didn't approach me that way. We have to be careful. We need to look. We need to see where people are at. Yeah, brother. So Pastor. I think that's where misrepresentation happens. A lot of times, God hates sin. There's definitely um, a penalty for it. I like that you pointed out in Mark 16 in the Great Commission where he talks about um, those who believe will be saved, but those who do not will be condemned. It's a lot different from John 3, 16 and 17 where he says, I did not come into the world to condemn the world, but through that through his son that people might be saved. So it's pretty interesting. But it also says in, you know, um, Isaiah 1, God is speaking to the people saying, come, reason with me. Let's talk about this. Right. Uh, yeah. Though your sins are as scarlet, you know, I can make them white as stone. Right. And then it also says in, um, I forget where, but it's in, I believe, one of the Pauline letters that it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. That's true. You know, so if I come and, I, and I'm being all tough on you about your bad lifestyle instead of telling you about God's love and how much he wants to make things right with you. Of course, you're going to be shut off, especially if I say you yeah. are doing this. Automatically, you're going to do this. Right. You right. Know? So the, the, the it's pretty interesting. Yeah. I, I think that when we do come to people and we want to tell them about God's righteousness and yeah. his hatred of sin or imperfection or however you want to put it, we also need to remember that we're doing it with a general concern of wanting to save them. Like, hey, you're doing it wrong. Let me help you figure out how to do it right because this is what God has shown me because at one point I was doing it wrong and yeah. God had to take time to show me how to do it right. Yeah, that's a good point. Did you have something, Pastor? Yeah, you know, uh, me and Adam had a conversation about this, about the fire and brimstone, about uh, if you don't repent, you're going to go to heaven. I mean, to hell. Um, we're, I like how you said we're, uh, you got to remember that we're uh, ambassadors to Christ and we're able to use that as the in the same means that we receive Christ in our crisis or our, you know, yeah, our, yeah, our yeah. tough places. Yeah. And when you come to someone in a low place, you're able to put them in a higher place. Yeah. yeah. And um, that I always that's something I always remember to do when I um, evangelize or share um, the good news with somebody to always put them in a higher place than myself because um, I can't forget where I came from and I and I. As well, want yeah. to go to where I'm going. It's important. It is. It's important that you can see that, that a person can see that. You know, Paul called himself the chiefest of sinners. Yeah. You know, because he did exactly what, what you're you're referring to, and you know, and and I, I I think about too. You know, one of the things that the the Baptists like to bring out sometimes they they, they go one way because they don't really some not all Baptists because there's so many different ones, but some. Don't don't believe in the gifts of the spirits or, or you know gifts of the Holy Spirit for today or anything like that. I don't believe that. You know, of course, I, I know that because I walk in those gifts. But okay, one of the things that they do bring out that that is very much the truth that uh, unfortunately a lot of Pentecostals and Charismatics forget is that you know the greatest gift is love. Yeah. And folks, I mean, you know, we can. We can have all kinds of, 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 of gifts of the Spirit, and they're all valid. They all come from the Lord. But if we if we if we got a wrong attitude and a harsh attitude, and and, and we're mean spirited, I mean, you know, we're not even going to have a chance to to minister to those people with and, and use the gifts that God has given us because we've already turned them off because there's no love in our hearts. We have to have the love of Christ. It is the it is poor. You, you can't. God is love. And, and so that, that part of, of, of Scripture can't be neglected. And folks, I mean, this is important, and it's so much an important part of this because, you know, it, it tells us that our purpose uh, uh, as a minister in part two is to go out and make disciples of the nations, but the obvious comeback question to that is, okay, but how do we do that? How, how can I be the most effective as possible in making, a, making disciples of the nations? 
Love is a part of it, for sure. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Romans Pastor. 12, 1 and 2. Yeah, go ahead. Renewing of the mind. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I can't give anybody something I don't have. If all I have is just this scripture memorized, but it's no application in my life, then I really don't have it. But once my mind is renewed, I can show others how to renew their mind with patience and the principles that God lays before us, which are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's, that's important. Um, you know, and the Bible also tells us that, um, that God puts within us to will and to do yes. of his good pleasure. Because there may be some of you sitting here thinking, look, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I don't know how to talk. I can't talk like you talk. You know, I don't, and, and, and everything like that. But God will put within you to the will and to do of his good pleasure. Don't worry about what you, you know, I, I always tell people this. Don't worry about what you don't understand or what you don't know. Just worry about what you do. And then walk in that. And just keep it simple. And, 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 and believe me, the Lord will, there's always somebody in worse shape than you that will listen to you. And they're, they're looking for an answer from anywhere they can get it. And, and they're desperate. Trust me, desperate people, you've got a lot to give. Every person here that has made a decision for Christ has a lot to offer uh, others. Okay, so I just want to make sure that you guys, um, that you guys, you know, get that and understand it. Okay, so the next scripture, okay, is in 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. Okay, so anybody want to read? Get your hands up so I can see it. Okay, brother, loud, okay? Two Timothy, and not First Timothy, but Second Timothy, uh, chapter two, verse two. And that, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, and Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's, that's a powerful scripture yeah. when you think of it. And, and, and the things that thou hast heard of, of me among many witnesses, the same commit you or commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So the, the idea, okay, the, the idea of making disciples is that, number one, we we're looking for faithful men. Now, you know, that doesn't mean that we, we withhold the word. We just look at somebody and draw a judgment. Well, I don't think they're very faithful, so I'm not going to talk to them. No, we, we minister to everybody. But when we find that person that's faithful and that's hungry, okay, we take that person under our wings and we, we teach them. Just like Paul taught Timothy and like he taught Titus. He, you know, he, put them, he brought them under, under his wings because he realized there was a special quality these people really wanted to serve God. So he, he wanted to make sure that they learned so that they in turn could teach others, that could in turn teach others, that could in turn teach others. Today, you're here because of that. Yes. There's not a person in this room that's, that, that, that's here but you, you, you know, by accident. You're here because, you know, because somebody somewhere, some point in time, shared the gospel, prayed for you, or something, and, and that was passed on to them by somebody that preceded them. And that was passed to that person by somebody that preceded them. So what you do is, is important in this life. That's why the ultimate question, when I was talking about those that had died and had come back from the dead, you know, that saw a glimpse of heaven and hell, or hell, and the, the ones that, were, so that, that talked to Jesus, he... But they were asked, what did you do with me while you were on the earth? It's a good, valid question. What did you do with Jesus? Because you're going to be asked that. And I'm going to be there to answer for you. Because all of us will stand before the Lord for ourselves. Every one of us. And we need to realize this and understand this, folks. Pastor Ryan's not going to be standing next to you when, you, when you're facing the Lord. Pastor Adam, Pastor Joe. None of them, they're, they're not going to be there. Every one of you here, 
Okay, well, and, and including me too. We'll stand before the Lord. My wife will not be able to come to my aid and say, but he didn't mean it, <laughs> or whatever. I'm going to have to answer to the Lord for, for, for my life. And uh, thank God, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> the blood of Christ cleanses me from all unrighteousness. So I know when I go before the Lord, when I stand before him, that he'll declare me not guilty. But we still have to stand before the Lord. Amen? Amen. And, if we, and if we're not doing God's will, okay, and we reject it, and we decide, I don't want this, to heck with this, I'm out of here. And we walk away. One day, we're going to face the Lord, and we will answer. And he may not say, not guilty. You know, that, that depends on you. No one can take your salvation. I, got, I don't believe you can lose your salvation. Okay? You can't lose it. No one can take it. The devil can't take it from you. And no other man can take it from you. There's not a person on earth, if you ask Jesus Christ in your life, there is not a person on earth or a person in heaven, that, 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 you know, or, or, or in hell, that will take your salvation from you. But you can take it from yourself by saying, I, 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 don't, want it. I don't want it. I've changed my mind. And, and, and I've told you before, the, that, that happened in the Bible. You know, the Apostle Paul said, there are many that walked with us, that I tell you, weepingly, weeping are now enemies, enemies of the cross of Christ. He talked about, uh, I don't know if it was Demas or who it was that walked with us, but he forsook us because he loved the world. So you got a choice. Okay? So, we, the, the, the second uh, scripture that was just read and to Timothy is very, very important. So we want to make sure that we, we, we keep that in mind in, in making disciples of others. Okay, now here's the thought in the lesson, okay, that this is the great commission of Jesus Christ to his followers. Matthew 28, 19 through 20, we read this. This is one of the most important verses in all of the Bible, for it tells you as a minister of the gospel exactly what your purpose and tasks are. You are to go and make disciples of all nations. The word teach, in some translations, is the Greek word make disciples. Also the word make disciples in the Greek is the word teach. I can tell you that because I've studied it. Okay, What does it mean to make disciples? It means to do exactly what Jesus did. Do you hear what I'm saying? Come along with me. He sees two guys fishing in a boat. Well, he can relate to the fact, he wants to relate to them where they're at. So he says, come to me and I'll make you a fisher of men. They caught on to that because they were fishermen, so they understood. You know? when, when Jesus found a person who is willing to commit his life to God, totally commit his life, Christ attached himself, listen to that, I like that word, Christ attached himself to that person. Can you imagine that? Somebody attaching themselves to you? In a good way, though. I, I, I wouldn't be where I was today. I could say that. I, I think back about a pastor. And, I mean, he knew air, all the low, dirty, low-down stuff about me because I told him. And that guy never gave up on me. I mean, no, anybody else, if they knew what I, I told him, they wouldn't have me in their... I don't know if they'd even have me in their church. If they did, they... they, they probably wouldn't associate with me too much. But that guy, you know, he, 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 made, he went out of his way to invite me and out of his way to talk to me and to, to make me feel welcome. And he, he attached himself to me. And, and, and I've never forgotten it. And, and, and it went a long way into my being in ministry today. You know? And so I like the, I like the, the analogy that the writer here says when he says that Christ attached himself to that person. He says, Christ began to mold and make that person into his image. Well, we don't mold anybody into our image, but we mold them into the, the, the image of Christ by showing them Christ, pointing them to the Christ. And, 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 and we, we serve as an example to how that person can walk, because they don't know. Many times they come in here and wonder what this being a Christian is all about, so they look at you. So what are you, you going to show them? You gonna cuss? Every, every everything come out of your mouth a four letter word, every third sentence. You can go out and smoke a 
a six pack of, or 12 pack, I don't know how many packs, how many cigarettes are in a pack anymore, but because I never smoke, but you finish last and some people smoke through one and then smoke through another and another all day long. And then they get to the scripture and, that, and, the, and the, the guy walks up to him, can you explain this to me? And they say, what? Sure, I can explain it to you. I'm a mature Christian. What does the Bible mean when it says that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> the guy, he, he's speechless. Well, you know, uh, if, if the body is the Holy, temple of the Holy Spirit, why are you smoking? Aren't you hurting your body? You know, <laughs> why are you drinking? See, I mean, you know, I don't like to go out and, if I see somebody smoking and I'm not going to walk up to say to them and say, put that cigarette out. There are some pastors that would do that in, in, in some places. And then there are some that just ignore it. My, 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 my view is this, okay? It's, the Bible says to the one that knows the right thing to do and doesn't do it, to him it's sin. So you may have two people. One is just puffing away, he doesn't have a clue. All right. The other guy is puffing away, he knows. Hey, man, I'm killing my, my, my body's in trouble of the Holy Spirit, and I'm like, my lungs are evaporating right now because of, of all this smoke. Okay, well, to the one that knows the right thing and doesn't do it, the Bible says to him it's sin. The other guy, he doesn't know. He's not held to the same level of accountability until he does know. Do you understand? So that's how I, I view it. That's why if I see things here or in other churches and stuff like that, I, I, I'm not going to sit there. and, 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 and I, 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 It's very rare, very rare that I'm going to say anything to anybody about anything. You know, there are times... You know, if, if somebody is inappropriate in, in, during the service, or if I hear something that is totally inappropriate, you know, somebody decides they want to cut a dirty joke while I'm here, and, and it's just way out of, bound, out of bounds and stuff, I may say something. I may say, hey, come on, man. You know better than that. Or, or something. There's a, there's a time and a place. The Bible says the Word of God is for, you know, uh, exhortation. Rebuke, correction, encouragement, all those things. But, but we need to know, you know, the right time. But I like this, okay? Christ molded and he began to attach, he attached himself to people and he began to mold and make that person into him, his image. The word attach is the key word. I thought so too, and they're just saying that now. It is probably the word that best describes discipleship, attach. So you, if you're taking your notes, you might want to put discipleship equals attach. Sometimes we think discipleship means to tell. You know, that, uh, as I think about it, and I hadn't even thought about this until now, there's so many people that are good talkers. And it's so easy to tell, but it's a lot harder to attach. <laughs> because attaching is like an invasion of our privacy. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. Do you get what I'm saying? I, I don't mind telling you, but, 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 but don't, don't, be bug, don't bug me. I don't want you all around me all the time. But we gotta, we got to drop that. All of us do. I, I, I probably do too, because I'm a, I, I, if I wasn't a Christian, I'd be an antisocial person. Because I like my time. I like my privacy. My wife will tell you I don't like being bothered. When I'm at home, don't bug me, man. Somebody comes to my room, what? What, what do you want? <laughs> That's the first thing that comes, starts to come out. You know, I, I'm just being honest and admitting it. It's, it's wrong. It's wrong. I admit it. Lord, I admit it. I admit it to everybody here too. I, it's, a, it's the wrong attitude. But sometimes that's me. What do you want? I'm doing something. Can't you see I'm watching television? <laughs> I'm watching a movie. I told my wife the other day, look, I've been trying to watch this movie for three days. <laughs> I still haven't gotten to the end of it. What do you want? <laughs> That, you know, but, but folks, that, that's, a, that's a terrible thing to do. It's, it's wrong. Because how many of you know that we're also disciples to those in our own home? They're the ones we need. I, I need to be a, 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 attach myself to my wife and be a witness to her. And, and her to me and to my children. And, and we need to attach ourselves to one another. There are some of you here probably you can't stand somebody in here. I don't want anybody saying anything, okay? So don't. But, but you know how they say iron sharpens iron, all that stuff. There's some people we like to hang out with and others we'd rather just, um, um, you know, keep your distance. Hello, goodbye, you know, God bless you. But, you know, don't hang around. I don't want to hang, hang around with you. But God is calling us to be able to attach ourselves, to come to a place where we're willing to do that. And that really mark, is a mark of maturity. 
So attach and discipleship are, are very good uh, synonyms, meaning uh, the, you know they're, they're similar words, a you know, uh, meaning of the same, uh, same thing. So he says the word attach is the key word. It is probably the word that best describes discipleship. Christ made disciples of men by attaching himself to them, and though that and, and through that personal attachment, they were able to observe his life in conversation. That's what I was just saying a minute ago. Okay, they were able to observe him because they were attached to him. Okay, and in seeing and hearing him, they began to ab absorb and assimilate his very character and behavior. They began to follow Jesus and to serve him more closely. In simple terms, this is what our Lord did. This is the way he made disciples. This was his mission and his method. His obsession to attach himself to willing believers. Yeah, don't try to attach yourself to people that aren't willing. Amen. Okay, because then, that, it's a good point that the writer makes here. I didn't make that point, but it is a good one. I see it here. He's, he, 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 his obsession to, uh, to attach himself to willing believers. And sometimes we chase people. And we try to, we, we want to convert somebody. And, and, and we become a nuisance in the past. We attach ourselves to somebody that just doesn't want to go. I think we've got to be careful about that sometimes. Um, you know, I've seen a few occasions where it actually works. I think about David Wilkerson in The Cross and the Switchblade. He chased Nicky Cruz all over New York <laughs> and attached himself to him somehow. Nicky Cruz could threaten him with a knife, man, I think he was ready to kill him. But, but, and, and maybe for him it worked, but I don't, I, don't, I don't think that, I think that's the exception and not the rule. You know? Maybe David Wilkinson saw something in Nicky Cruz, though, too. Maybe he saw a, a, a deep inside a need and a hunger and a, a willingness that maybe he didn't want to admit to. Yeah, you know, so. But it is wise, okay, to attach, uh, attach ourselves to willing believers. Then he goes on to say, there is another way to, to describe what Christ did. Christ envisioned something beyond himself and beyond his day and time. He envisioned an extension of himself, and an extension of his very being, an extension of his mission and his method. The way he chose to extend himself was discipleship, attaching himself to committed persons. And through attachment, the person absorbed and assimilated the Lord's very character and mission. They in turn attached themselves to others and discipled them. They too expected their disciples to make disciples of others who were willing to commit their lives to Christ. This was the way the glorious message of Christ was to march down through the centuries. And that's true. Um, you know, when you look at this, when he says there's another way to describe what Christ did, he envisioned something beyond himself and beyond his day and time. But he, he, he envisioned the disciples being an extension of himself. And, and whoever you disciple, and we got some pastors here too, and others that will probably be going through pastor school, if you're not going already, you will be, and you'll be pastors. But I, I speak to the pastors, the people that you minister to are going to be extensions to some degree of yourself. You know? Paul, Paul would tell people to, to walk, in the, walk in the way I walk. You know, and, 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 and follow me as I follow Christ. So in that, in that respect, they become an extension of you. Because you're, you're an extension of Christ. So you, it's very important. Ministry is not something to be taken lightly. It's very, it's a huge responsibility. That's why the Bible says, let not many of you uh, uh, become or desire to become teachers knowing that you, you, you incur a greater judgment. So, uh, not, meaning, not, not meaning that we shouldn't want to do God's will, but there's some people that just do it out of ambition, selfishness. They just want to be heard, they want to be seen. I want to teach, I want to preach, I want to get beyond the pulpit. But they don't want to pay the price. They don't want to live the life. They want an audience. But, but folks, we're responsible for what we know. And what we learn, and when we once, what, what, once you've heard it, you, you, you can't unhear it. You heard it. You, you're, you're accountable. And when we begin to teach others, and we're telling others how they need to live their lives, but we're not living it ourselves, we fall under a greater judgment. So it's important. Amen. Anybody got any comments before I keep going?
You do, raise your hand. Go ahead, bro. It said, uh, Jesus saw Zacchaeus, the tax collector. And the word used there was idio. The same word that we get idea from. Jesus obviously knew that Zacchaeus was watching him and saw him. Saw that he was a tax collector, you know? Yeah. A lot of times they were referred to as the lowest point in the Jewish culture. Yeah, the lowest yeah, person yeah. in the yeah. Jewish culture. And um, he had an idea of who he could be. And he went in and he had dinner with him. And today, and then in that day that he had dinner with him, he declared salvation because Zacchaeus repented. He says, I will give all my half to the poor. Anybody I've wronged, I will pay up to four times if I've taken anything. So he saw who he could be. And is that what we do for others when we see them, especially in our frontline ministry? Do we see them as who they could be in Christ or do I see them as they are, they are and where they've come from because I've come from there. So it's easy for me to spot those things in them and who I wouldn't want to hang out with or am I seeing them as Christ would see them and yeah. have an idea of who they can be in Christ if I just would take the time to, you know, yep. attach to them. That is, that's so right on because, um, you know, we... Um, we're not to see each other after the flesh or know each other that way, but to learn to relate and see one another after spirit and to see people, really to see, see one another the way that God sees, sees them. That's why it's good for us to pray and say, Lord, I know what's going on with this guy or with this girl, with this person, but, but Lord, what do you say about them? What, 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 what's going on in their life? What, what, what do you have for them? How do you see them? I, and I, I think that's for me. In ministry too, I, I, I want to see people the way God sees them, and I want you know I want to say what God says, and I want to hear, you know, what, what God speaks, what what He's saying, not not what comes out of myself. And so I think what what you brought up is is really important, a good point. It's a great point actually. That, that is, when you were saying, I was thinking that 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 that, that, that is a that, that's a great point in ministry. If we could do that, if we could capture. <laughs> The love of being able to see people the way that God sees them, you know, man, I'll tell you what, you know, we we really could change the world. We could. Twelve ignorant. The Bible says twelve ignorant and unlearned men turn the world upside down. Yes. That's what the Pharisees said. Who are these ignorant and unlearned men that have turned the world upside down? What a compliment! They didn't know it was a backhanded compliment. <laughs> ignorant and unlearned men that have turned the world upside down. Some of us, I mean, we're, we're, we, we may not be the most learned. Some of us may be ignorant, you know, in, in, in where we've come from. But, 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 but like our brother said earlier, Christ, he renews the mind. He, he, bring, he, he renews us. He transforms our mind. So, so whatever we were, wherever we came from, we don't have to be that anymore. Don't, don't ever let anybody pigeonhole you. And don't pigeonhole yourself. Don't, don't, well, I, this is where I came from, and that's my excuse. It doesn't matter. God changes people. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so continuing, there's no question what our Lord's commission is, okay? We are to go. That is the commission. We are to go. What is the Great Commission? We are to go. We are to go. Maybe some of you are thinking right now uh, about where, you, <laughs> where, where God is sending you. Because I've had questions in my mind before, too. I said, what in the heck am I doing out here? There is nothing here. There is nobody here. I don't know anybody here. But it's where God, where to go. Wherever you go. I'm thinking of, the, of you guys that are starting, trying to start the church. I don't know, maybe you started already. Out in Ripley. I've driven through Ripley, man. I, I've, I've, I've come through there. I don't think I've ever seen a soul in Ripley. I drive through and I'm in and out of there so fast on my way home. I, 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 I barely, I think I've seen one, one or two pickup trucks. But, 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 but when you look at Ripley, there are houses and there are people that live in those places. And, 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 and so God calls you there because there's somebody there God wants you to reach. And that, that, that ministry there in Ripley is as important as this ministry here or as important as any other uh, uh, ministry in any other church. Because God desires it all be sale, saved. That all come to a knowledge of the truth. You, you, you don't know, man. 
somebody staying in one of the little mobile homes in there or, or something like that could be in the next Billy Graham. Yes. You get them the Word of God and they, <laughs> they come out of there like a man on fire. I've seen it happen like that. You never know. I'm thinking about that one pastor, man. If he, if, he, if he had given up on me, I might not even be in ministry today. But because he believed in me when nobody else did. Today, I, I preach in churches all over the world, actually. You know, I travel all over. If I can't do it in an airplane, do it online. So, you know, but, I, but, but, but it's because somebody had, had faith and believed. They saw me the way our brother said. They saw, what, they saw the potential. They saw me like it, 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 the way God saw me. And not the way others perceive me. And so, so that's really important. So there's no question what our Lord's commission is, where to go. But more than that, we're to make disciples, to attach ourselves to those persons who will follow our Lord until they in turn can make disciples. Your purpose as a minister of God is, okay, point, uh, number one, to, or make this point A, to disciple others. To pick out several believers who are willing to commit all they are and have to Jesus Christ and then attach yourself to them. Pick out as many as you can handle. Wow. Now, folks, that, that, that's, that's heavy because I don't know how many of us have done that or how many of us can do that. But if you're, I believe the, what the writer in, this, in, in our book is saying is right. I... <laughs> Doing that kind of goes against my nature, too, because I don't really like to do that. I like to preach and minister to people and talk to people, but I like to keep people at a distance. That's just the way I've always been. I'm sorry. You know, I, it's not personal. I don't mean to hurt anybody, but it's just the way I am. But, but, but here, what he's saying, is, it's, a, it's a lesson to me. That's why I like having these studies, because as I read them, I, I'm not just teaching you, but I'm, I'm, I'm also learning myself. And when he says to disciple others, pick out several believers who are willing to commit all they are and have to Jesus Christ and attach yourself to them, I can't in honesty say that I've really, really done that yet. Um, maybe to some extent, but not to the extent that I could, you know? And, and so that, that's, that's an area where I, I need to work on, but, but an area where we all... We, to be effective, we all need to do it. Point B would be this, okay? To teach the willing believer all that you know. Let him walk and talk with you. See you live, pray, teach, minister, eat and relax. Let him observe you day by day as much as possible and absorb Christ in you. Now, I, I, I saw, I've been around people that did that. And I watched them, and, 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 and it had an, an impact and an effect on me. But again, I, I again have to admit in, in, in that I, I feel like I fall short in this area. And, but yet we have to do this. There are sometimes it says to teach your willing believer all you know. Sometimes there are people, and, and, and they want to come over to talk to me, and they want to learn all that I know, or at least something I know. And I'm tired. And I'm thinking, they want to know, and I'm thinking, will you stop bugging me? <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not telling them that, but in my mind, I'm thinking, geez, I just want to go home. Can I leave? You know, I'm tired. But that's selfishness. I mean, here this person is hungry, they want to know, and we're, we're, we're giving them the shoulder and saying, you know, catch me at another time, I'm out of here. Or don't catch me at all, I'm out of here. Or catch somebody else. Or go go ask go 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 ask Pastor Joe. <laughs> he, he, he you know he'll he'll tell you or or, or Adam or go to, go talk to Ryan Pastor Ryan or some you know it's easy to push it off on somebody else, but God is asking us are are we doing this? Are we willing to teach to teach the willing believer all that we know to let him walk and talk with us, let him see how we live, how we pray, how we eat, teach, minister, eat, relax. To let that person observe us day by day as much as possible and absorb Christ in us. See how the Lord is working in our lives. Are you guys getting this? Yes. You guys in the back? Yes. Are you? Are you getting in the back? I don't hear anything. Yes, 
Amen. I heard one person. Amen. Amen. I heard two. Everybody in the back. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Way back, because I, I know you're. I'm, I got you guys. You guys way back there, but I don't want you to feel removed from what's going on. So you know, in the future, if you, if if, you're, if it's too far back, you can always come over and pull up to the side. You know, so we can get closer together. I just don't want you guys to feel left out. Okay. All right. So. Um, uh, uh, the point C would be this, okay? Uh, our purpose as a minister of God is to always be discipling some believers and then turning them loose to disciple others. Set a goal as to how long you think it will take to train each disciple and then turn each one loose to disciple others. And as you turn each one loose, then pick out another committed believer to replace them in your group of disciples. That's interesting. Yes. Because I know that there are some churches, some pastors that don't want to do that. What they want to do is they want to accumulate members of the church. <laughs> do, you, do you see that? You know what I'm saying? It's like they're afraid to let them loose. They don't want them to leave the church. They don't want to cut them loose to go out and disciple others. I do. When I when I when I've pastored all the times I've pastored. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I was pastoring my church and I see a, man, a person to come up and they were ready to go, I wanted to see them sent out and commissioned into ministry and sent out. Because that way I can replicate w my ministry through them, like we were talking about, and they can go on and, 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 and then, of course, they've got their own personalities. They're not going to be robots, but they're going to go out and minister to others and do and, uh, Christ to other people. And so we want to let go. We want to let people go. But there are some that are only concerned about building numbers and building the church and so they got a bunch of people that have been in the, their church and they were ready to go and when they were ready to go nobody sent them and so guess what happened to them they vegetated and died because they're ready to go but they wouldn't be no the, the pastor wouldn't send them so they got they, they they just ended up dying on the vine they just ended up sitting in the back just becoming another person another another body in the church there, there's a time, and we have to be perceptive enough to know when it is. To, to When we've discipled that person, we go say, okay, man, you know, I've taught you what you need to know, man. Go out, go. Go out and do do what you do, man. Make Go out and make disciples of others. Meanwhile, you, you come over here and you grab the next guy, you know. I, I see a lot of potential in you, so, you know, you know, I want you to get on my coattail wherever I go. Come on with me, you know. Take, when you go out and minister, take that person with you sometimes. You know, it's 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 so it's so unselfish, and it's so important. Okay, so we're almost done. Uh, that, that and, and so we're going to wrap it up here in a minute, um, because I don't like to go more than an hour, you know, or anything. And this was actually pretty heavy. There was a lot involved in this, um, and so. To wrap this up, it says, do this, okay, disciple others, for it is the great commission of Christ. The very method he used. We can soon reach the world if you and all ministers will follow the simple instruction of Christ. Disciple. Pick out and attach yourself to all who are willing to commit their lives to the ministry. You find somebody that's hungry from the ministry? You find somebody that's even thinking about going to minister school, ministry school, pastor school. Grab them, man. Grab them. And then and get them in. Get them in. I was so glad to see Adam and to see Joe, to see both of you guys in, in, in the ministry school. In you. That's right. I forgot about you. I keep seeing you. You're so quiet. Huh? Yeah, that's the Adam. The other Adam. What? No, I'm just, he's the, the one who passes the one Oh, you're I, going, though. I was, but... Are you going? The Lord's giving me a different path. Oh, I'm yeah? Gonna, I'm going to assist wherever I go. Okay, all right. So you're going to, so what are you going to do? What are you going to be doing? Uh, I'm going to be with Joe. All right? Yep. Whatever Joe needs me to do. You're going to work with him? Yes. So are you going to be his assistant pastor? Uh, yeah, his assistant. But Joe, um, Joe, so something yeah. I wanted to point out, though, that, that you brought up a very good point. When a rabbi saw something in somebody, he would tell them, follow me. And there was a lot of people that would get passed up by the rabbi uh -huh. 
so like, and it would kind of, in that culture, it kind of leave you feeling like you had no value because the, everything revolved around synagogue and the church. Right. So when the rabbi would come and say, follow me, it meant like that teacher saw something in somebody. And it's just funny that you brought that out and, you know. God sees something in each and every one of us here sitting at these tables today. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. And uh, that's why we're here. Well, Amen. you got a, you, you know, you got a definite future in the things of the Lord. And yeah, yeah, Pastor Jeff. Uh, this one was told to us that I did go to pastor school that um, we need to be the example so that others can see that they can do it as well. And that there are going to be some that are even more equipped to do it. You know what I mean? And God's, God's plan for your life, you can never run or, or, or negate that, that process, no matter where you go. And um, when it's all said and done, uh, I believe that God's going to fulfill the path that he wants you to, 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 to go down, no matter where you're at or what, you, what choice you make. And yeah. that's an example. He's going to be that example. I, He's more than able. He's oh, yeah. really knowledgeable, you know what I mean? But um, that's great that someone is so unselfish that they want to help somebody else. Yeah. That's even a greater position than even the one that's in that position. Yeah. Um, and I'm grateful for him. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. And we've had examples of that. And yeah. Adam right here is an example of that as well. And he's, there's other people that are following his lead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, that they have totally the, the total capabilities or even more so than people might believe so you know what I mean but they're all so unselfish that they want to make sure that the the thing that they're committed in is thriving and, and okay before they stretch out their wings and uh, yeah. this Adam here never said yeah. nothing man no he does He's quiet. Man. When he does, he drops a lot of knowledge. You know, yeah, yeah, he's really, yeah, he's really, uh, yeah, I learned a lot from him. It's very simple. But too. like I said, uh, he's a good example. And I see, like I said, regardless he, of it being said, I see his example falling upon other people. And, um, yeah. And I see the growth of himself. It's a personal thing, like, for, to see someone personally pursuing God. Yeah. And not being that person you were talking about earlier that just wants to be seen or heard. Yeah. Uh, just have that title, you right? Know what I mean? But have that ambition, desire, and um, commitment, and um, to be so unselfish to allow God to do the work in somebody else as they're doing the work in them. Yeah. And that, yeah. Um, yeah. Whenever they're called or um, need to to rise to the surface, they're more than capable. And I've seen our, our men do that a lot, especially uh, um, we're offered opportunity in Bible studies or to preach. Though I see those men, they're the first ones to raise their hand, or they never say no, mm -hmm. or you know, what I mean, um, they just have that, uh, they just have that uh, uh, wonderful God-given ability to, to deliver uh, so, uh, something to, to those around them that's going to change their lives. Yeah, well, that's that, that. I mean, that that was good. Just just with, with both of you guys, the interaction of, of this whole thing, because um, you know, with you. You know, one thing, too, we have to remember is that not everybody's called to be a pastor. Even if you go to, you know, there are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. There are different ministries, you know. And, you know, I used to like to watch Rawhide. I know it's probably too old of a movie for you guys, but, you know, or, or to a show. But if you ever watch the old black and white western, this back when Clint Eastwood first got his start. So you have the ramrod who's in charge, right? And Clint Eastwood is the foreman. You know, he played the part of Rowdy Yates. I think every pastor needs a good foreman. Yeah. You, you know, you got to. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of times it's the foreman that carries the, the he, I mean, he's the legs behind everything. You know, it really gets the yeah, thing. One, one person ain't going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, and, and, uh, I like this. Uh, well, I was going to say something. Um, I don't remember, but it, like I said, I, I, I'm very grateful for these the, the men here. I'm very grateful that uh, God has um, equipped and gave the uh, the direction to those that, that 
that need to um, uh, come to, to attach to each other, that you're able to go out and do this. And if one falls short, another one's right there to take that person's place. Yeah, yeah. And that's what the great thing about this place is, you know what I mean? And, and being in ministry, these are relationships that are going to go far beyond our time here in discipleship work. Yeah. Yeah. And all that. And I, and I see those uh, relationships forming in other places as well. You know, I mean, there's other people in here that those relationships and God's going to um, uh, do his work and uh, making that into something that's going to bear fruit at some, um, at some time. Yeah. To see. That's good. So, how many, do we have anybody here right now that's going to do pastor school? I know you are, right? Yeah. Exactly. There's yeah. another one right here. This dude, this guy right here. Yeah. 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 Well, he's got it all over his spirit. You know. <laughs> God called him. Yeah, no, I, tell, I, I tell him all the time. Like I said, there's some of these guys that are, uh, they don't have the title, but they, they have the spirit, the spirit that goes inside of them. Yeah, him. yeah. Yeah, he's another one. I, was, I told him when he came back that, you know what I mean, uh, another one was Paul that left here. Yeah. I know that God's going to do something with him as well. Right. Um, because he did, he graduated high school. But I'm saying that I, he's, like I said, I, I, he, when he speaks, he talks about the Lord and you, you feel it. You know what I mean? When that guy speaks about the Lord, you feel it. This guy has, speaks about the Lord and you feel it. Well, I hope when he graduates, I hope when he graduates from pastor school, he comes to Yuma. We need a set free in Yuma. I'm still going to try to get one. Man, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll help you. If you come. What? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll be there. Because I live there. So, if you don't know what to do, man, I'll be right. I, I, I'll, I'll help you out, man. Uh, there's a lot of people in Yuma, man. No, but like I said, you just uh, emphasize something that has been said about those two gentlemen as well. Man. And like I said, man, um, they're going to be... The Everybody that does it, and everybody that, that uh, fulfills that commitment, and everybody that fights to the end is going to be better than like these two gentlemen are. Amen. And there's other ones in here as well. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? And um, it's all about speaking life into somebody. I see it in a lot of people, man. I was going to have that brother over there. I sold it to this brother right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of it. it it's, and I, I know God's going to be working. I want to share one more thing, and I, I want to I see you, brother. I mean, man, right there, right there. I want to say this: that um, this is the the this church has been the best thing that ever has happened to me, and um, our pastor is the, the one of those examples of what we're talking about here. Yeah. yeah. That many doubted, but when it's all said and done, the God. God had a calling upon his life and he yeah. fell into it yeah, he as did. well as he's not just doing it for himself, he's doing it for us as well. There's not many churches you're going to find like that. And um, you got to make your time count here and um, you have to persevere. There's going to be days that you're, it's not going to be easy. There's going to be times you want to quit or give up or just subside to, to the world, but you can't. And if you have that calling or if you have that this desire, um, you got to see it further than your eyes are able to see it as well. I've been here for a long time, and there's a lot of guys in here that are going to, you know what I mean? There's a lot of guys in here doing things that don't happen anywhere, but I, I've seen here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's one special thing. I always like to uplift my ministry, uh, our ministry here, and that's one thing I, I love to say when I have an opportunity. The same way he said about um, sharing the gospel or the good news or evangelizing, you always have that opportunity. Always um, rely on what you've been through, what you've experienced, and well, where you were at. And those are the things that are going to transcend somebody from where they're at to where you're you're at, or even further down the line. And that's the great thing about being in the ministry that you're able to, to see that all the way down. You know what I mean? And I've seen that time and time again here. You know what I mean? And um, if, if, if the, like I said, there's many people that are examples here. If they can do it, you can do it as well. And God tells us we all can do it. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. Praise God. Well, I, I just want to let you guys know I appreciate um, being able to be here with you guys again today. And I'll be here on Sunday, this Sunday, uh, to minister the word um, uh, with, with you guys. 
And then I guess next month we'll be at it again on, on Thursday night to continue. So we're kind of inching our way through. We've got a long ways to go, cause, but, 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 but you got to stay in this because this, I was looking at this the other day, uh, today, because I got here early, and it was talking about like you and other ministers, how to deal. We'll get into that. That's way back, way up in chapter that only God knows. We're, I don't, but, but it's a long ways from here, you know. But it, we'll be talking about false doctrine, how to deal with it, um, how you deal with other ministers, and, and and everything like that. So there's so much things that thing thing things you're gonna learn. That, that will help you. That even and the reason I, I teach out of this uh, this book is because it's the only one I ever found that really helped me in a lot, and and, and is is a, is a good book for any minister. And 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 those of you that are pastors and or in ministry, if you can, you know, I'm sure that this book. I don't know if it's in print anymore or not, but if you can get a copy of this, you know uh, what what the Bible says to the minister. Doesn't even have an author, but just uh, you know, go and go to the bookstore and request it, you know, and they'll order it for you. It's worth it, yeah. Oh, I wanted to say something that um, I hope that one day that you uh, can do a pastor school here as well. Because there's some people just like here, an extension of um, where we go, and we can have an extension to those that are in the next, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm hoping that like we would meet me and our guys. It's a long drive of needles, but. It'll be wonderful to have that here. If you guys decide that you guys want a pastor's school here, let Ryan know or let me know, and I'll I'll come and do it. We can. I, I'm, I'm I'm that's that's my ministry is is to minister to other. I'm, I'm, I spend mo most of my time actually ministering to other pastors, pastors and their wives, yeah. and, 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 and 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 I really would love to do that because. I can shoot. There's so many things that as you get into this, it's an adventure, that's for sure. You're going to meet people, you're going to go through things, there'll be uh, different things you go through. And to, to have that foreknowledge and understanding and experience, somebody to have talked to you about stuff like that, it will help you a lot. I wish I had that. I didn't have it, you know, but I wish, but, but yeah, if, if it's something you guys seriously want to do, um, talk to them and, if it, if it, and then just call me up and tell me. We'll set it. We'll set a date, and I'll 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 do it. Amen. 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 Does anybody else have anything before we close? Thank you for coming out. Oh yeah, I really appreciate it. Love to come. Amen. I got three flies too, man. <laughs> <laughs> but they won't land now. Now that I got my swatter here, one landed on the swatter. He was a smart guy. I couldn't get him. And and another one landed on my camera until we turned the lights on. So <gasps> so, all right. Well, let's 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 close it up with prayer. Um, Pastor Adam, in front of me, can you close it up? Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this evening we had and the Bible study we got to with Pastor Mr. Father God. I pray that the word that was spoken out of our soft and good soil, Father God, and that everybody was receptive to the word that was spoken. Lord, I pray for the God's mercy, Pastor Mr. Father God, make his way back to the Lord, Father God. Lord, let us just um, have a for the rest of our night. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us here. And uh, next time, okay? Keep your feet to the ground. Keep your head to the sky. God bless you. Thank you again, uh, everyone. So, okay, I'll give you two